we have another living John Doe. His name is possibly Shannon Knight or Sinane Knight. Shannon Knight suffered a stroke and has organic brain damage. At the time, he was living in Chicago on the northwest side at a mental health facility. The Guardian's office in Chicago, which is in charge of handling living John and Jane Doe's in the Chicago area, has listed the name of Sinane Knight as an alternative spelling for Shannon. He's been cared for by the local system since 2007. It's the only alternative because he doesn't have a social security number or a legal name. There's no way to get him Medicaid. He's described as soft-spoken, and he believes he has a son and possibly a wife. He began carrying a red folder around with him at all times, writing in it anything he thinks he might remember, in hopes he can find his own name, or maybe even jog a memory at a later date. He has also made a homemade card that he carries around with him, in hopes he can give it to the son he believes he has, to show that he didn't forget him. He gave his date of birth as November 2, 1976, though officials have said they weren't able to verify this date, so it's pretty likely it's not correct. Although, if he's not from the area, it possibly actually could be. He's been arrested before, but the charges weren't released. Those arrest photos might, however, be the best clue for someone in his family to see and identify him. The arrest took place in Cook County. When arrested at that time, he gave his address as a local homeless shelter. If you recognize Mr. Knight, please call the office of the Guardian at the number on your screen. Shannon Knight Doe is five foot seven and around 175 pounds. He's gone unidentified for 15 years. The Boone County Jane Doe, 1992 identified as Margaret Snigowski. Margaret hailed from Toledo, Ohio. She went by the name Maggie, and she was a spitfire. The young woman was pretty popular and funny. Maggie wasn't embarrassed by anything, and she stood up and even insisted that the school let her try out for the boys' wrestling team. It appears she likely would have made it, too, if the administration hadn't refused to allow it. She had a wicked sense of humor, and one of her favorite things to do was embarrass her big brother by running up to him in the hall at school and giving him a hug. Her family would say she was just full of life. Her 19-year-old brother, Lenny, remembers very clearly when she went missing, saying he arrived home for a visit and his 17-year-old sister was missing. Maggie had seven big brothers and sisters, and while they'd all left the home by then, she still lived there. At first, her parents believed she'd run away perhaps wanting out on her own to fly the coop and spread her wings, like the other siblings had before her, and they said they weren't overly worried. As the days went by, however, they became more and more concerned. Lenny tried to find his sister. He searched her room, which he described as messy, and he said this made it hard to tell what was missing. Nonetheless, he didn't think she'd packed a bag. This contributed to the fear that something might have happened to her, leading Lenny to drive the area and look. He went so far as to comb around the high school and look inside dumpsters. That fear didn't decrease in the next 30 years. They desperately wanted to know what happened to Maggie, and they had no idea. It's clear they were looking for her, but not if she was in fact reported missing. It's likely she was, although if that's the case, she wasn't entered into the local databases later, as I'm not finding her name in any of the normal places. The truth went beyond what they feared as she was found over 200 miles away in Indiana. It might as well have been a world away, as they had no expectation she left the area. She was found off the side of the highway, carelessly tossed aside, like so many of the other people that I end up reporting on. She was found in May of 1992, although there was no specific cause of death found. In addition, she had no clothes on, other than a green tank top and socks. Police then had hoped her tattoos would help find her. There was one on her right arm, as well as one of a cross. But they didn't help. Unfortunately, she'd been there for three or four days, and they found it hard to nail down the specifics. She was eventually buried in a pauper's grave outside of Boone County. She would be exhumed a few times over the years to get new recreations, and they did do an isotope analysis, the results of which can be seen here. In cases like this, a lot of time, isotope analysis isn't overly accurate. In the end, it was her DNA three decades later that gave the answer. 
and it was Othram Labs that we have to thank for this identification. In April of 2022, her now 49-year-old brother Lenny stated, It is this painful confirmation of my worst thoughts, because although I've missed her tremendously, I had never really started mourning her. My little sister was found on the side of the highway, discarded like a piece of trash. She's no longer that. My family is grateful for everyone that looked, worried, searched, cared, and cried for my little sister over all these years, as if she was your own little sister. Her parents, for their part, never recovered. Her dad eventually died, desperate for word but hearing nothing. Her mother lived longer, but was reportedly extremely bitter due to Maggie's disappearance and lack of knowledge as to what happened to her. One brother, Mark, did believe that she had died, but others had held out hope that she was still alive. It was easier to think she perhaps left on her own. They said she was fierce and a tough girl, and that she wouldn't have been an easy target. Her brother offered one final warning in the interview, saying, Now the work begins to find the lowlife or the people who did this. Anybody who knows my family knows we don't forget. These guys are coming for you. She was not trash. She was a beautiful, loving, upbeat person who didn't deserve her fate. Maggie went unidentified for 29 years. Thanks everybody for watching and listening. We have new episodes every Monday and Thursday. Take care of yourselves and each other.